Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a, a Roy Lichtenstein image using uh, Adobe Photoshop. So, this is uh, Biggie Smalls, and I did another one with Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, I did a thought bubble, and with Biggie Smalls, I did it with regular text. I wrote it was all a dream, and Elvis, obviously, I wrote as the king. You'll notice the background. I put a halftone in here, and there's halftones on Elvis, and then there's a halftone on Biggie Smalls. So halftones were used to conserve ink on magazines and uh, comics. Um, they're basically dots that are placed next to each other, and they conserve ink. So here are examples of um, student work. So here's another example of one of my students that did some work. And I want you guys to please take a look at uh, Roy Lichtenstein's bio. All right. When you go to his bio, you'll see information about him. All right. So really fast. Let me, sorry about that. Let me go back to Roy Lichtenstein. All right. Here we go. So now. We do have Roy Lichtenstein, um, his bio over here. You should click on it and learn about him. Also, type in Roy Lichtenstein and look at some of his artwork, and you'll see how he used those dots and stuff. So his daughter told him how to paint like this because he used to paint like Norman Rockwell, and one day um, he, she showed him an image of Batman, and she said, Dad, you can't paint like this. And he took it to heart, and he always made his paintings with half tones. Okay, so that's what he did. So... I used examples of Biggie Smalls and an example of Elvis. So let's get right to it. Let's start making this design right now. Let's get into it. All right. First thing you got to do is you're going to have to locate an image. After looking at some of his work, getting inspired, I chose this image of Biggie Smalls. I copied this image. I go into Photoshop. Here's how I did this. I went to File, New. It already set the size of the image in here. I hit Create, and I went to Edit, Paste. And now I have Biggie in there. Control zero gives me the exact size of the image. Now let's get into this. First thing we're going to do is remove the background. As I've showed you in Photoshop, you can go to Window, Properties, which is right here. And in the Properties menu, check it. You click Remove Background, and automatically it's going to select the pixels around the image and remove the background. It's awesome. Now we want to get rid of this little area over here as well, which is red. So you can click on the image itself. If it doesn't get everything, and you hit delete. If I don't like certain, uh, another thing that it did, hit control D. You can now click the eraser tool, and you can erase anything that it has missed. And just go right around it like that, and that's fine. So now that we've removed the background, I'm just going to click on this background right here and delete it. I am going to, there is no background now, I am going to make a brand new layer and put that layer directly underneath it and we are going to fill it with a, a color. The color isn't important, but we're going to just choose any one we want. So now that we've made the, la the new layer, we're going to make it a background color by hitting Command and Delete. Sorry about that, my bad. In order to make the color the background color, which is this one right here, you're going to hit Control Delete. Oh, sorry. Click on the layer itself, hit Control Delete. And now the color is white. Next step. Now that we have the new layer, we're going to double click into the empty area of the layer itself, right here. And it opens up the layer style menu. While the layer style menu is open, we're going to go into the gradient overlay okay now in the gradient overlay you are going to make sure that the blend mode is normal you're going to make sure that the opacity is at 100 percent the style you want it to be radial the angle will be 60 percent and the scale scale can be 125 once you've done that you're going to open up this menu over here it's not going to look like this it's probably going to look like this so on the first dot, you can make this one white. So when you see this uh, square over here, you double click on it, go all the way up to white, bam, click OK. Next one, um, and you can make sure that the location is 40%, 40%. Okay, and now we're going to make another dot. On this one, I'm going to make it a different color. Double click into it. I'll go into an orange. I'll go into this orange and that's fine and that's okay I like that I want the location of this one to be 70 percent 
70. So now I'll make one more. I'll go all the way over here. And on this one, I'm going to make it a little bit of a different color. Not too, not too crazy. You can go into a, uh, well, we'll go into like a reddish kind of color. Like right over here. Boom. Okay. And now we got the red. And this location, I'm going to make it 90%. 90. Okay. Great. I am then going to hit OK. And after you have done that, you can just OK everything, and boom, now you have the background of your custom, a custom background made. I just want to emphasize something really fast. If you go back into the, um, the blend mode, when I got into gradient overlay, guys, you can choose any colors you want. You're not stuck with these colors or the amount of overlay. You can, it's really entirely up to you, but this is something that is really effective. That's why I did it. We're now going to merge both of these layers and we're going to make them into a smart object. So the background and the uh, image is the same. Holding shift, well, select your layer two, hold shift, select your first layer, go to the drop menu, and you're going to convert to a smart object. Okay? After you have made it a smart object, you hit control J and you have duplicated it. Okay? Now, take away the top layer and you're working with the second bottom layer. The next step is we're going to put a filter on this image on the bottom layer. Clicking the bottom layer, making this layer active, you're going to go to Filter. You're going to go to Filter Gallery. And then you're going to click on Poster Edges. Make sure that the thickness is 2. Make sure that the edge intensity is 1. And then make the posterization 2. And then just click OK. And now you have edited this image into a poster on the bottom. Now that this is a poster, you're going to make the top layer visible, and you also make it active. And you're going to drop the mode, the blend mode, and you're going to go to soft light. Okay, you click soft light. Now, next order of business. With this layer selected on the top, you're going to go to filter, pixelate, and you're going to do a color halftone. You're going to make the max radius 8. You can actually change it later if you want to try something different. And keep all of the other settings the same. And just hit OK. And now you have done the halftones. What these are called halftones, they're Ben Day dots, Benjamin Day dots. All right, they were made by a guy named Benjamin Day. And now these are the halftones, which look like a Roy Lichtenstein. All right, a couple more things that Roy Lichtenstein did is he would put writing in. So I'm going to click on the T for text. And I'm going to put the words, it was all a dream. Okay. Now, the reason I can't see it was all a dream is it's under everything. So I put it up top. Now, I'll make it a little bit bigger. And there you have it. So it was all a dream. There you have it. Now, this words right here, um, you change the color over here, right? And then you can also change the font over to here. And you can go into basically any color that you want and place it anywhere that you want. All right, so I'll put it right under here and boom, there you have it. Now, I want to show you one other thing to make a Roy Lichtenstein. He didn't always use halftones in the back. He used solid colors. Because if I go into my stuff right over here, we got Roy's work. You'll notice that sometimes he used hints of solid colors, like over here. See how he has the solid color over here and half tones elsewhere? So let's go back into his stuff. Whoopsie. Uh, bam. All right. So in order to do that, you can click on this layer and you can then delete. We'll make a little bit of a bigger brush. Soft edge. Size bigger. Once you click on this, it's going to ask you to rasterize the layer. Hit OK. Now watch this. I could slowly get rid of just this one part right here. You know? And now it's gone. And I can erase this part right here. And now you have just that one little part right there. So you can still see that it's a Biggie Smalls. Like it's, it looks like a Roy Lichtenstein image over here. Now, um, I want to show you another thing that I did with Elvis. So over here, he is all solid in the back. I did the same thing I did with that, but I put a thought box. All right. In order to put a thought box in, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that right now. So I opened it up 
and I went to a thought box, okay? I copied the thought box. I copied the image. And then I'll go back into my, whoopsie, I'll go back into my Roy Lichtenstein, my Biggie Smalls one right here. I'm going to go to edit, paste. And now I got a thought box. No problem. I'm going to click the image. I'll get the magic wand. I'm going to delete that, control D. And now with this thought box, I can hit control T. And I could shrink the, put the box anywhere I want. I could even change the box and make it go this way, like this, and put this over to here. And I could take the It Was All a Dream, which I happen to think this looks really super sleek. However, I could take It Was All a Dream, and I could then also put a different word in here. Um, sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. Sky is the limit. And you could put it in here. I could also highlight it. Change the font. I can go to a comic serif. Uh, they're alphabetized. A, B, 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 C. Comic. Comic Sans. Sky is the limit. I could put that up in here. I could make it black. And we'll highlight it come over to here boom 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 black and now you got it in black and I'll kind of twist the words a little bit right here and boom sky is the limit and now I have sky is the limit and I could take away it was all a dream and now you have sky is the limit thank you so I have sky is the limit and it was all a dream so these are just ideas on the way that you can do this you could keep sky as the limit and it was all a dream. Or you could take that away and you could do a thought box and a thought bubble. The reason that I'm showing you guys all of this stuff is because now with the Roy Lichtenstein's work, we have the image of Elvis that I had done, which you can also do just like this one, right? With the king, you write it this way. In order to make the words wavy like that, you highlight the words and you come onto here and you have the flag, all these different things, the arches, and you can change the way the words are and stuff, okay? So that's that one. Now, what we have is over here on Biggie Smalls, really quickly, let's get back into it. So over here, you have Roy Lichtenstein's thought boxes and thought bubbles, and you also can add half tones yourself. You can actually copy these half tones. You copy the image. And then you go into your Photoshop, you go back into um, this one right here. If we wanted the half tones in there, right? I go to edit, paste. And now I've pasted those half tones in there. I'm then going to click on the magic wand tool. You could get the half tones in this way. Hit delete, control D, control T. Now watch this. These half tones. They're above everything. I'm going to move them over to here. And you can move these half tones kind of like this. So they kiss on the edge over there. Right? And if you want them behind anything, you can name this layer. Half tones. And you can put the half tones under stuff. So that this way it goes under the bubble. Right? And if you don't want this over here, this other stuff over here, click your magic wand. And you click the areas and you delete the white. Boom, boom, clicking and deleting. See that? Just for the essence of time, what I'll do is I'll hit Control T. Whoops, Control D. Rawr. Control D, Control T. And you can actually move this stuff and make it any way you'd like. All right, so you have this option to do it. You could put thought bubbles or with the Biggie Smalls. You can have it written where the whole thing is in solid in the back. Or you can do it where you have him where it's a little bit, um, you know, half and half. Not solid and unsolid. But definitely, before you get into this and dive into this, you can get half tones. But definitely look at Roy Lichtenstein's artwork. Look at Roy Lichtenstein's artwork and you choose for yourself which aesthetic that you guys are looking for. Okay, thank you.